Let me ask you a question. When and where was wine invented? The earliest archaeological data of wine production date from more than 8,000 years ago in Georgia and in the following millennium also from China, Iran, Armenia and later in Greece. But actually it's only fair to say that Mother Nature invented wine. Then as soon as grapes are crushed and the juice is set free, yeast that are present on the skin of the grape and in the environment start using the sugar in the must and turn it into alcohol and carbon dioxide. A process known as fermentation and in this case a spontaneous fermentation. Until the late 19th, early 20th century, this was how wine was made and fermentation sometimes went well, sometimes not so well. Mid 19th century, Louis Pasteur suggested that yeasts were responsible for the fermentation of wine. And since Müller isolated pure strains of yeast at the end of the 19th century, winemakers started to add pure strains of cultured yeast. So nowadays, winemakers and also brewers have two options. Inoculate with a specific strain of commercial cultured yeast that offer particular desirable and consistent qualities, or go for spontaneous fermentation by making use of the natural occurring flora, the so-called wild yeast. What are these wild yeasts? Wild yeast, also called native, indigenous or natural yeast, and that the cellar on the surface of the grapes, but they also already cling to the walls of cellar and vineyard equipment. These wild yeasts can be separated into non-saccharomyces and saccharomyces yeast strains. They have a huge impact on the organoleptic properties of the final wine. The composition and relative abundance of the yeast strains is depending on what is called the terroir, which is the soil type, annual mean temperature and rainfall, etc., the ripeness and health of the grapes, as well as the production procedures in the vineyards. Non-saccharomyces are the predominant yeasts found in the vineyard on the grape skins and play a role in the early stages of the spontaneous fermentation of grape musts. Among these, Hansenia spora, Candida, Pitia and Menchikovia are the most important genera. The Saccharomyces yeast are typically found in the wine cellar and on the wine making equipment. As fermentation progresses, the population of non-Saccharomyces species decreases and the wine yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae completes the fermentation process. The ability of Saccharomyces cerevisiae to outcompete non-Saccharomyces species is for instance associated with its higher fermentative power as well as its increased ethanol tolerance. Spontaneous fermentation comes with some benefits and risks. Of course, spontaneous fermentation will lead to a unique product, based on the population of the yeasts. The fermentation process is quite unpredictable, which can be good for making unique, very complex wines, but spontaneous fermentation also comes with some risks. For example, stuck or sluggish fermentation, Wild yeast often have a low resistance to alcohol. This may result in stuck fermentation and a high amount of unwanted residual sugar, for instance. Slower onset of the fermentation process. Wild yeast exist on grapes in much smaller numbers than a dose of inoculated yeast. Therefore, it takes longer for the fermentation to start, leaving the grapes open to infection from other spoilers organisms and also from oxidation. Unpredictable byproducts of off flavors that wild yeast can impart to the wine. Therefore, many winemakers prefer to add cultured yeast at the beginning of the fermentation to assure a good fermentation and a predictable, stable product. Another option can be the so called sequential fermentation. Here, you combine the advantages of the naturally existing yeast flora and the inoculate cultured yeast. Spontaneous fermentation is allowed to begin while observing the must carefully by frequently testing the amount of sugars and determine the actual alcohol content. When the alcohol has reached the desired level, a commercially available Saccharomyces cerevisiae is inoculated to ensure complete fermentation. In this way, you might get the best of both worlds. 
Another option can be to determine the types of yeast present on your grapes or in the must. We have several analytical methods available to test the most important parameters during winemaking, like sugars, alcohol and other components, as well as sophisticated tests for detecting different yeast species. Have a look at the wine analysis pages on our website for more details. Thank you for watching this video and please check our website for more information about wine analysis.